All right, so you guys can see we've made some big progress on the Ram 2500 rebuild, but now I need your help. I'll tell you more in just a sec. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. From over there, I thought that he was loading it on the back of that board, and I was like, oh. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> this will pull it just fine. I was just going to talk to him about everything. Gotcha your frame sheets but I think it was like if I remember right 10 or 12 millimeters over okay um, and then I just had to replace both side rails all right easy enough I suppose I could say that, that <laughs> you just did we're good <laughs> Perfect. So if you don't care, that works yeah, for me. Yeah, Thank you. Absolutely. Now even on a heavy duty pickup truck like this, you might think, gee, there's all these places you could hook something, but there's really not a great way to secure this because being this close to the front of our trailer, hooking up here, you can't get the right chain angle. So that's where our little cluster hooks come in again. We're gonna go right under here, right in that hole in the frame, come off our link right down to the trailer. So what, I heard her saying something about this ought to tow it just fine. How did that come up? Because she came running over here thinking that we were gonna load this onto this. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, that's what I said. I wouldn't mind owning this and I would have no problem driving that. But that is not cut out at all for, mm. for this. A couple of people have made comments about being really mad at the first shop that turn this job down and that's something that really isn't fair to them like i said i've been a mechanic all my working life and i never want to commit to a job or give somebody a quote without seeing it especially on collision work where it's going to be worse no matter what it looks like on the outside when you start really getting in there you're going to find more problems and I would much rather have a shop look at it and say, hey, now that we've seen this in person, we don't want to get involved with this at all, than to get into it and then say a week, two weeks later, hey, we're having problems. Hey, we can't do this. Hey, we can't do that. This is worse than we thought. I'd rather just have them turn it down up front. And I'm not upset that they turned it down because I've turned down jobs. Not everybody wants every job. And there could be any multitude of reasons for that. They may legitimately have enough business doing other work that they just don't need this and it's more headache than what they want to take on, which is completely okay and nothing to be upset about. This is this thing loaded on the back of the 3500. We're touching the overload springs, but they're really not that compressed. We're good. It's, uh, it's sitting just about level with the truck, which is what you're looking for. change this truck got a topper now that may seem a little silly to do at this point but we actually ordered this topper about a week and a half before victoria was in the accident and wrecked this truck it just took about a month for this thing to get ordered and come in and unfortunately in the meantime the truck went from running and driving and everything's great to you know sitting behind a body shop waiting on an insurance adjuster <laughs> The reason we had that put on now though is because the place we ordered that topper from is only about 10 miles from the body shop that did our framework. And both of those places are about 70 miles from where we live. So it made sense while we were down there, go ahead, 
let them put the topper on just so it's out of the way it gives us a little more dry storage and any body or paint work that we're going to be doing is going to be happening on this end of the truck so it would be masked off right in this general area you know somewhere along the side of the cab anyway so i don't really worry about having that on there but that leads into what you and i are doing tonight while the, the frame has been straightened and these arms have been replaced, there is still a lot of broken stuff in here. And I need to put together a list of parts that I need to start looking for. This is where you come in. As, I, as we're going around the truck tonight, if you see something I missed, or if you see something that you think we need to take a closer look at, comment down below and tell me about it because I can't see everything. I'm not perfect. And if a few thousand of you guys watch this video, I'm sure somebody will find something that I didn't. So some parts we know we're gonna have to replace like this fan hub that's physically broken and the cooling fan itself, which is physically broken. And we're also gonna need to replace all the other things in this pile behind me. These are our big parts. These are our obvious parts. We're gonna need outer fenders for both sides. We're gonna need a hood. We're gonna need uh radiator support gotta have a new radiator support because that one is in lots and lots of pieces a uh, new bumper this inner fender liner is actually okay the cooling fan is gonna have to be replaced you can see it got damaged pretty seriously these coolers might be reusable this one is the power steering cooler it doesn't look like it leaked anywhere but it is pretty bent and anything we find on this job that's questionable is getting replaced so new one of those this is your charge air cooler it is destroyed so gotta have a new one of those uh, bumper we talked about we're not going back with a factory bumper. We've got a couple of different options we're looking at. You guys are going to see more of that as we get further into it. A uh, new fan shroud. This one surprised me a little bit. This is the factory air filter box, and you can see it got the front smashed out of it, and there was something else. I think maybe the top of it is cracked, but either way, that's got to be replaced. That that needs to be replaced. And then this is our air conditioning condenser. It's destroyed. Gotta have a new one of those. Those are all our big parts. But now that we're back over here at the truck, we're looking at the stuff that's not quite as large of a part, but is still gonna have to be replaced. See this right here is the transmission cooler. It does have to be replaced because it is bent. But the reason I didn't take it off is because it's not leaking. And when you start this truck, the transmission pump is pumping. And these two lines just, one of them just sprays fluid like a water fountain if you were to unhook it and try to run this truck. The other stuff we have to look at is like over here, this battery box is broken. So we've got to replace that. The uh, headlights got broken. We've got to replace those. This battery box looks okay. That's our battery. I was charging at the battery because the alternator on this truck is, uh, is not charging. I don't know why. I don't think the alternator is bad. It's right here. It does not appear to have been damaged in the accident, but for some reason, this truck doesn't charge. So I gotta sort that out. So one bolt-on accessory we will replace is the power steering pump here. Now the power steering pump, because of the way the belt is set up, it runs as every time this engine is running. If the engine's running, the power steering pump is running. And because the cooler was damaged and the reservoir was damaged right there, this pump didn't have any fluid moving through it. And in addition to actually providing the steering force, the power steering fluid lubricates that pump. So it's been running dry with no lubrication and that can't be good for it. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. As we come around here, We'll start getting down a little bit. All the hoses that came off, like our radiator hoses and everything, that's all getting replaced. I need another cap for the wheel there. Under the front here, everything, according to the body shop, 
was pretty okay. Hoping we don't have to do a lot down there, but I don't know for sure. That's everything I see on the exterior of the truck. Now let's take a look inside. All right, so we're getting in the truck and you can see one, I have a stall mat over the windshield. That's because we had a tornado come through the other day and I was, hey look, a C-130. They usually come over in pairs, so we may see another one here in a minute, but we had a tornado the other day and they, you know, I was expecting some hail, so I couldn't get it in the garage, but I did just throw that over the windshield to try to protect it. Fortunately, the bad part of the storm missed us. There was some damage if you got closer to town, but we dodged the worst of it, thankfully. Hey, look, there's number two. Let's hop in the truck here and this, that's a new carburetor for the spray coop self-propelled sprayer we run. If you guys stick around, you'll get to see that coming out here real soon because while a lot of people are already cutting hay, we're not, but we have made some, some big changes in our hay system that you guys are really going to enjoy. So we're in the truck here. Number one thing in the truck is we need an airbag. We need another airbag. And we need seat belts. Now, why do we need seat belts? Well, these seat belts... See how, see how tight that is? Even with everything unbuckled and loose, and this was a, a comment that came up, I talked about this in another video, and I said these seat belts locked up in the accident, which is true, as you can see there, they did very much. I mean, that's, that's tight enough, you could, you could play music on it almost. And a lot of people pointed out that, hey, older trucks did that too. And that's true, but what, what I want you to see is if we walk around here to this 97 F-250, I can grab the seat belt, pull on it, and make it lock like that. But once the pressure is released, the seat belt goes right back to functioning just like before. The rear seat belts are fine because there wasn't anybody back here. We actually took the rear seat out of this truck some time ago and built a temporary load platform in here. This truck, I've told you guys, uh, Victoria is a canine trainer. She works with law enforcement. She works with a lot of really cool stuff, but this truck is being set up specifically as a canine truck. That's what, that, that's what inspired the topper. That's why it happened. That's why there is a bed rug inside underneath the topper to provide uh, you know a little more comfort and security for moving animals but there is going to be uh, a few different things coming to set this truck up specifically for being a working canine truck and we're also going to be doing some modifications to my red truck too because as you guys know my dogs go everywhere i go and we're, we're going to set that truck up for them if you thought letting dogs in a brand new truck was a big deal, just wait till you see what I've got planned. I'm gonna slide back up in here. We need a new four wheel drive switch because this one got struck during the accident and it's broken. And the truck is actually stuck in four wheel drive right now. Uh, this dash is apparently somewhat broken. So we need to address that. And then the clock spring in this steering wheel, whoopsie. Uh, I'm gonna step out here where the lighting is maybe a little better, I hope. But inside that steering wheel, there's a device known as a clock spring that handles all the electrical current that needs to pass through the, you know, rotating connection there at the steering wheel. And that clock spring, when the airbag's deployed, they damaged it. That's the way it's set up to work. That clock spring, once it it passes the amount of current necessary to fire this airbag, the plugs on there melt. Now the dealer would replace that. The insurance company was calling for replacing that. But the only problem with that is those melted plugs. So we're going to be pulling ours out and we're going to be sending it with our seat belts out to another company to have that stuff rebuilt and repaired. Because this is really going to be a very fun build. I think that is all the problematic parts we need to be aware of right now. Like I said, if you guys see something I missed, 
comment down below and tell me about it. If there's something you're concerned about, comment down below. I've got some parts sitting in the garage right now to go on my red Ram 3500. You guys are gonna be seeing that happen real soon. I've got two brand new front tires for the John Deere 6410 sitting here. We're gonna be putting those on and I've got two brand new rear tires for that tractor somewhere on a truck. So we're gonna be putting tires on that tractor, getting it ready for hay season. We've got to get our self-propelled swather going. We've got to get our pull-behind swather going. And then there have been some really interesting changes with our hay baler situation. So go ahead and hit subscribe if you want to see how all that pans out. Until then, thanks for watching and more later.